What's going on guys? My name is Neeb. Welcome back to Aromatics. We've got four new fragrances and uh, they all released within I think the same month. I don't know, but I got them in the same month. And there is way too many fragrances for me to be sitting here and just dropping four videos on you guys. So I figured let me do you one even better and just give you all of that in one video. So if you appreciate that, show me your appreciation by leaving a like, hit that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and get started with one of the hottest releases or one of the first ones I got actually. Let's go to Old Fashioned, shall we? Old Fashioned by Killian. So this is a fragrance that just dropped in uh, mid 2024 and I found that it dropped in a pretty strange time because of the fact that this is an ambery resinous style fragrance and it's supposed to smell like an old fashioned. So I don't drink, but an old fashioned is supposed to be like a classic drink where like the base of it is whiskey if I'm not mistaken all right long story short the, the this is supposed to be a whiskey inspired fragrance and it has like a resemblance to his other lineup of these great liqueur lineup I guess if you will so a great one also by the way if you're looking forward to that angel share paradise let me know down in the comment section because that is one I'm absolutely looking forward to the way that this one smells is kind of like this waxy just waxy woods simple as that it's waxy it's woods it's got a slight vanillic undertone but it's that resinous vibe that kind of makes this one smell like it's much more for a mature man the one thing that I did not enjoy about this fragrance is that it didn't smell like anything new this in fact reminded me of like apple brandy without the fruits. So it has like this wheat peat style of DNA. It's kind of dry and slightly powdered because of that. It almost smells like you, you ground up some of that wheat and just dusted it over woods and slight bit of resins. The resins does give this one a much more mature, I don't want to say dated, but a lot of the younger people when they smell like resin for it or resin heavy fragrances are gonna be like, oh, it smells like granny or old manny. I don't personally find it that way, but it does have that waxy resinous, slightly vanillic base of the fragrance. Performance on this one is another area where it took a hit okay so the scent profile in itself like I said it feels like a more stripped style of DNA I love Killian's creations for the most part but this isn't going to be a love for me and the reason I say that is because I feel like they could have did more with this DNA for me it smells like a more stripped style fragrance of some of their greater fragrances giving you a little bit less than most and if you could tell like even my description was pretty short because that there's really not much more to describe it didn't really transition too much and uh, it didn't really last the longest either in terms of the performance this was average at best so average is for to six hours, I got about five hours performance out of this one. Considering the facts, this is an eau de parfum concentration. I just think that it's not really riding on any like dense, although it does have those waxiness uh, nature side of things. It's a pretty powdery fragrance. It's not that rich, if you will. Projection of this one, I'm gonna give it a moderate projection. Although it's on the very low end of, sp of the spectrum of moderate, which is like two feet, it might even be slightly less than that. We're gonna give it a moderate and it's only for the first 30 minutes. So if you're looking for performance, if you're looking for something that's going to be uh, you know projecting screamer attention grabbing this isn't it but we'll summarize it nearing the end and I'll tell you guys why I still respect this fragrance in a way uh, in terms of the occasions this is going to be very specifically for special events and dates more so dates the seasons for this one I really think that this is supposed to be a fall winter and maybe early spring style fragrance not a summer fragrance at all which is when it released so for the price considering everything that you're getting with the fragrance you're getting something that's unique to Killian for sure I just don't think I would buy it again I wouldn't buy it again honestly so in terms of the performance I think it's doing what it's intended to do it's not something that's supposed to be loud you can't have this style DNA go loud it'll actually come off off-putting genuinely so what I think with this one is it's appropriate for what they were intending I just don't think that they intended it for it to be mass appealing and there's nothing wrong with that it's just not something that I personally like so long story short I don't enjoy the new old-fashioned would I buy it again no if anything I said interest you you like that close encounter you just want five to six hours woody resinous slightly boozy from that whiskey peat it's more whiskey peat powdery than it is boozy at least to my nose and you'll probably enjoy this one that's it you want an aura you just want like a vibe you don't really want cologne vibes that's the one to go with and it's got to be suiting to those occasions and potentially because of the fact that I don't drink is another reason why I didn't really enjoy this one so I don't think it's a bad fragrance by any means but those are my honest opinions on old-fashioned moving on for it and I don't know about you guys man did you really want to watch a single video about this on its own like that let me know your thoughts down in the comment section or do you appreciate these combined style reviews where you get a lot more than just one so moving on to the next one this is another one that I got it's called Tom Ford ombre leather or it's eau de ombre leather and this was surprising it was surprisingly close to something else but it was also surprisingly good uh, in fact it's probably one of my favorite Tom Ford ombre leathers uh, ombre leather the original one is a great leather fragrance one of the best leather fragrances but I don't really enjoy just straight up slabs of leather the 
Parfum is absolutely miles above a better in terms of the scent profile than the original. And this one is now something that gives me a little bit more than leather and I enjoy it for that exact reason. To enjoy this fragrance, you've got to like a lot of these spicy notes because that is exactly what it has a lot of. It's got coriander, it's got cardamom, it also has ginger, vanilla leather, and they have this ambro fix in the base, which absolutely helps this one in projection and performance. It actually performs and it projects like a champ. So this is a scent profile that reminded me initially a little bit of like this vanilla chai spice meets baby cat. I got baby cat vibes. It's like that suede leather. It's almost fuzzy in texture. You can almost smell like you, you know, you have the hairs of that new buck leather basically, or suede, I should say, except it does still have that original in the backbone. Behind all of that, there's a contrasting zingy nature that livens things up and almost makes like these, uh, the coriander and those spices feel like they're carbonated in a, in a way. Uh, so it's pretty contrasting. You have like this textured fuzzy style of uh, leather, which is also vanillic, which at the same time has this carbonated feel and a zingy nature to it. Very attention grabbing, compliment worthy for sure, and much more interesting than those other fragrances of their previous releases. Not to say that those are not that good, but this is a flanker where it changes it enough to absolutely justify its non-redundancy. This is not redundant by any means. It's refreshing. It's nice. Sure, it reminds me of like, you know, maybe 60% baby cat, but everything else about it justifies the purchase. Like I said, I get a vanilla chai spiced style DNA with that baby cat fuzzy leather and the uh, ombre leather backbone, basically. Performance for this one, I would say that it's above average in terms of longevity being nine to 10 hours, especially on clothing. And it, honestly, I've smelled it to the next day on clothing. So I kind of want to say beastly, but let's just keep it to above average for now. With more wearings, I'll give you guys a more definitive. I will say though, that the projection of this, it is, it's moderate, but it, it's absolutely insane in its scent trail. This is one I would turn around and just get wafts all like five hours worth. So it's definitely a projecting fragrance. It smells good and it projects for a hell of a long time. The occasions for this fragrance is actually a lot more versatile than some of the other ombre, ombre fragrances. And it's probably because of some of those freshes, even though it doesn't say that it has the freshness at the top, the ambro fix and some of that ginger livens things up, makes it more versatile. I would say bros, I would say office, I would say dates and even for special events and just spray it accordingly. It released during the summertime and I think that it did just fine in the summertime. You could wear this all year round. It depends on how well you enjoy spicy fragrances, but that goes back to the scent profile to begin with, whether or not you're gonna enjoy it. But if you do enjoy these scent profiles, you can wear this all year round. It doesn't smell like an everyday fragrance. You definitely wanna keep it more so reserved for like special events and those other uh, you know events that I mentioned, not as an everyday. Otherwise, a great fragrance. I think this is probably one of the best releases from Tom Ford this year, aside from Mer Mystery, which uh, I believe came out this year and a lot of people didn't really enjoy or care for. Moving on to the next one, this is Versace Eros Energy. And um, I kind of don't even want to focus too much on the notes with this one because it's familiar and doing something a little bit different at the same time. What I get with this one, you guys, is kind of like this Creed Aventus Cologne meets Mont Blanc Explorer, but in every better way. This does something very similar to Aventus, but it definitely doses up the lemon. And the lemon is not a cleaner lemon. So kind of like in this Club de Nuit vibe, but at a designer quality and a designer level. It's not synthetic by any means to my nose. It's very lively. It's very citrus forward. It's very energetic. It really is. And I will be honest and say that there are a lot of people who are dogging on this one for no reason. I've sprayed this on and I've worn this. I mean, you guys look at the dent. This is my bottle and not to mention other people's bottles that when I was in Cabo with Jeremy Fragrance and uh, Evan Fragrance, we drained their bottle. So this is probably my most worn. This is my most worn out of all of them. And I could smell it on clothing the next day. Genuinely, the next day I could smell it on clothing. Projection for this one was also, it was definitely moderate. I'm not gonna say room filler, but it was like two to three feet of projection. This smells like the Aventus DNA, toned down a lot of that birch, keep the oak moss and increase the lemon. It's like lemon heads, but a little bit fresher than that. Not as sweet as a lemon head can be. It's great. It's great. It genuinely is great. Uh, I'm not paid for or sponsored in any way by Versace. And this is honest, uh, honest opinions. If you were to ask me between Mont Blanc Explorer or Versace Eros Energy, I would pick this one 10 times out of 10, period. Simple as that, man. Uh, I will say that the price point differences does just still justify the price of this one, but in a 
perfect world where everything matches, I would say that this one is better. Energetic, zingy, fresh. There's no way that people are gonna dislike this one. And anybody that reports, uh, you know, uh, below average performance, I'm sorry, but they're probably not testing this fragrance properly, or they're just really not a fan of the fragrance. Yes, it smells like Aventus cologne. Yes, it has a little bit more lemon than that, but that's that's pretty much it. The fragrance in itself, though, it's still good. If you have a lot of Aventus, then maybe stay away from it. But the fragrance in itself, it's still good. I'm kind of sick of the whole Aventus DNA. I am sick of the whole Aventus DNA, but like I said, Aventus cologne, zingy, citrusy, it's really good. Plain and simple. For the occasions, it's an everyday style fragrance. You can wear this everywhere, any day, any season, it's an everyday fragrance. For the price, if it comes down to discounters for like 70, 75 bucks, it's a no brainer. It's a no freaking brainer. And that's pretty much it. Last but not least is the Valentino Born in Roma, the gold. So this one is a little bit underwhelming as well in terms of the release. I think I was expecting something a little bit more. You guys know my love for gold is, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, but this is a fragrance that opened up relatively familiar. It kind of reminded me a little bit of that yellow dream uh, meets something of Coral Fantasy, much less than the actual yellow dream meets the original. So it's kind of like yellow dream meets the original Born in Roma, except it also adds a lot more of that cedar wood and vanilla, that 1 million style DNA, which 1 million is known for some of that mandarin, the cedar wood, the nutmeg and vanilla. And this has all of those. It has that nutmeg, it has that cedar wood, it has that vanilla, and it also has the solar notes. So basically what I end up smelling, if I stop thinking about some of their flankers, is I definitely smell the new 1 million gold. I smell the new 1 million gold mixed with a little bit of uh, yellow dream. So that's kind of what I get with this one. When I initially sprayed it on, I didn't really focus too much on comparisons. I like to dissect the fragrance first. And then, you know, as I start to like really live through the fragrance, I start to think of other fragrances it smells like. And this one actually gets pretty damn close to 1 million the gold, the new one. Um, I will say though that it does seem to be a little bit sweeter than that. It still holds on to a bit more vanilla, but I mean, everything else is like 1 million the gold. So it's like get either the gold or get this one. If you ask me which one I would get, I'd probably get this one because 1 million the gold does go more towards the woody realm of things. I'm not gonna say that they're exactly the same. They're not. They, this one is a bit fresher than that, but it's still very familiar. In terms of the performance for this one, it gave me about six hours at best, you guys. And the projection for this one was moderate. I'd say about two to two and a half feet. And that's pretty much it. Nothing spectacular. It smells like the 1 million gold meets yellow dream with a little bit more powders. If you ask me which one I'd take, I'd say this one. Is it a good fragrance? Occasions for this, everywhere, everywhere. It's inoffensive, it's woody, it's got mass appeal, it's got sweetness. It's still sexy, it's fresh, but woody at the same time. It just doesn't last longest. In terms of the seasons, also all year, you can wear for everything. So all things considered for the value price point and the fact that it's very versatile, it's not a bad fragrance. It's just not the newest fragrance. If you don't have the other Born in Romas, you don't have 1 million the gold, I would say get this one. It's actually better than 1 million gold, to my nose at least. Uh, that's just it. I would personally pick this this one over 1 million gold because of the fact that it has youth factors, it has that powdery vibe. It's a good fragrance. It smells really good. It's just kind of redundant if you're a collector that has all of the other ones. All things considered, it's not a bad fragrance, just maybe not the best release because it's slightly redundant. It is better. It is definitely better than 1 million gold. And uh, for whatever it's worth, if you're thinking about those two, or if I were to pick between those two, I'd pick this one every single time. It's still a great smelling fragrance with really just average performance. And that's pretty much it. I think it can be redundant if you have the other Born in Romas. And uh, this pretty much summarizes the newest fragrance releases, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.